go. <laughs> so welcome everybody. My name is Justin Lethby. I'm an instructor. I've been a realtor since 2006. I've been training since 1995 for various companies, various topics out there. Um, I'm part of the John Maxwell team as a trainer, speaker, coach these days. And I just do a lot of training and speaking out there. And when I saw Jim sit there and say, this wonderful series is coming out, I said, how can I help? He said, let's talk. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. And <clears throat> Today's topic, we're going to kind of keep a sense we're all in the same room. We're going to keep it a little more free flowing. I probably will share my screen here a little bit just kind of as a, as a mental note for stuff. But we're going to talk about ways to stay top of mind. And, uh, you know, for me, top of mind always means that I'm out in front with the people that I know, even with people that we don't know, and, and keep that conversation in front of people and, and, and really trying to stay relevant for the conversations for people there. So... Let's see here. Did you give me access there, Jim? It looks like it. So let's do this. So I have 10-ish ways that we kind of talk about to stay top of mind. And again, folks, if you have questions, just holler them out. You can, I believe you can unmute yourself unless Jim muted you. They can. Okay. So you guys can unmute yourself anytime you wish. You can ask questions in the chat box. I will see it. Not a big deal uh, either way. So we have 10-ish ways that we'll change, stay top in mind in here and, and stay with your clients, especially in today's world when we are dealing with the fun world that we're dealing with today. So the first and foremost is easiest way is postcards slash note cards. You can send little items out there where you can sit there and say, hey, we're thinking of you. Happy birthday, anniversary, congrats. Uh, I find these extremely helpful in today's world just for the pure fact that uh, we all want to be thought of and we all want to kind of stay um, socialized in some degree, right? We don't get to go hang out with people. So this is a nice little touch that you can make for easy conversations. Obviously the phone calls worked as well, but I am going to add a little factor to this. And when I talk about phone calls today, I'm also, I'm talking about the phone calls. But I'm also talking about the fact that if you have an iPhone, you can FaceTime one another. If you have an Android or if you have an iPhone and you want to be cross-platform, you can use an app called Duo, right? So D-U-O is an app that's out there and it's, it can be for any, any brand. iPhone, Apple does not matter. And when you do that, you have a video chat that you can do back and forth with your friends, your family, your clients, however you want to stay uh, relevant in their mind. So that's a, a real easy way to do that. Another nice way to do this is an app called WhatsApp, W-A-T-S-A-P-P. -P. Now, the reason I talk about that up over the other ones is while they're all really good, FaceTime, Duo are really good and they are secure, WhatsApp has added an extra level of security. They actually have encryption in all their stuff, texting, phone calls, stuff like that. So you don't have to worry about your clients having a conversation that they should not be having that could be listened in on. So I really like the WhatsApp. Uh, it's an international app. It was actually developed in India years ago. It's part of the, uh, I think Facebook bought them. So it's part of the Facebook product now, but it's a really nice app that's out there that can really add a lot of functionality and for you to reach out to your clients. Now, the next thing out here is to run, I think is a real good idea is to run workshops. Now we're gonna talk about um, some other ones here in a little bit, but run some trainings, run some workshops out there. So um, you can do this different ways. We'll talk about this again a little bit later, but run an investor workshop, run a first time home buyer workshop, run them weekly, run these events out there where you're doing this stuff every Friday. Right now, for real estate agents, what I am doing is every Friday is I'm having a lunch and learn. People can come in from 11 to 12 every Friday via Zoom and listen to a topic that's relevant to them. Now, I would recommend staying consistent, right? If you're gonna do first-time home buyers, do first-time home buyers. If you're going to do investors, work on the investors, have that same conversation. Um, I know Stephanie was talking earlier, she has a certain niche. I would just have those conversations at all times and have that out there. And maybe it's a series that people can come into and grow that fan base and grow it out there. And I'm also gonna come back about this, why this is helpful now, because you can 
once you do the workshop, the video, you have it can go into many platforms, which is what I absolutely love right now is multi using the stuff that you already have available to you. So get in there, do the workshops and do them continuously. Uh, one of the things uh, it has been stated uh, for a couple, well, probably about six, seven months now is online learning is going to be a $3 billion plus dollar business in the next three years. I feel that real estate can jump in on this. We can actually take huge advantages, have our own learning packages out there and build an audience of people that want to work with us in those environments. And again, it's helping us stay top of mind. So another thing that we can do, National Association of Realtors has offered for us until the end of the month anyways, and some are a little bit longer, but for the end of the month, National Association of Realtors have offered us discounted, heavily discounted training, certification training that we can get done. So one of the things that we can do in there is get the, um, the PSA, we can get the ePro, we can get the investors for free. Those three we can get for free, but almost any other one is somewhere between 30 and 50% discounted. So the reason I'm telling you this is not so much that we want to come out there and, and just get the class for education purposes. I think that's usually advantage and take advantage of the value. But one of the things that I'm teaching a lot of folks to do, and they're getting some hits off this is, if you get the PSA, so you're learning, you know, the uh, pricing strategy and now analyze, you know, what the PSA where you get to learn how to do a CMA essentially go out there and say, Hey, I'm taking this. Do you mind if, you know, email to your friends, put it on Facebook, who wants to get a free valuation of their home? I'm testing some strategies I'm learning online right now. I'd love to test on homes out there, build that list, get people to come out there and say, yeah, I'll do it. Use my home. Here's my address. Here's my stats. Right. You get to learn some of that stuff out there. You get to practice what you're learning and you're building your list and you're staying top of mind with your clients. So don't be afraid to use those tools for learning, but also for promoting some of the things that are out there. Networking. Um, we're all getting used to zoom. <laughs> we're all getting used to it. There are less and less people that are getting up and scratching their behinds or standing up and all we're seeing is their shorts, right? We're not seeing that as much anymore. People actually have learned how to mute when they walk away where it's awesome. So right now you can actually come out there and actually have networking events with your clients. So do it for a subdivision. Do it for uh, your family and friends. Do it for a coffee clutch group, right? Start your own coffee clutch. Uh, the, uh, the Fox Valley's uh, WCR group, they do a Thursday Thursday. So every Thursday they're getting together or all just hanging out and they're chatting. I actually am, I'm a big Disney fan, I'm a big Disney addict. There is uh, once a month where they all get to come in on Zoom and we're getting hundreds of people coming in there. And we're just kind of talking Disney stuff. So find those opportunities that just have your interest. And that may seem counterintuitive, counterintuitive, right? It seems like some people are saying, you know, why would I want to just have something that's not real estate related? Here's what I'm going to tell you is some of the biggest realtors I know when they have formed their business, they formed their business outside of selling real estate. So for instance, there is an agent I know out of South Carolina. He's a huge football fan. So what he did is he got on all the social platforms and just followed and chatted with people that were of the same football fan base. And 60 to 80% of his business came from those social groups that just had that. So start forming your own Zoom networking groups. Start forming your own Zoom environments to get out there and start having it. If you're in a small community like me, I live in DeKalb, start having a networking group for business groups, right? So the chamber is doing good stuff, but not everybody's part of the chamber. So now start forming a virtual networking group in the area that promotes local businesses that people can start chatting and talking about how things are going. Again, as Jim said, hopefully by the end of the month, we're going to see some daylight. We're going to see some solutions out there. It'd be awesome to be able to support the local businesses and, and have a meeting group saying, here's how you're going to do. How do we want to help promote you? How do we want to help do that stuff? 
having those networking groups virtually will definitely help get that moving along. And again, you're staying top of mind. So Justin, just to kind of piggyback on that, it is, I, I firmly believe in that. This is, when you're able to talk to something that is really natural to you, whatever, like in case of the football player or the, you know, the football fan, it allows you to make a connection with each one of those people a lot easier. So doing things like this, whatever it is, a, you know, Thirsty Thursday, a barbecue thing, um, you know, it, barbecue. it comes naturally to people and it's an easy thing to make those connections. I like the barbecue one. I'm going to have to do that one. I've been researching online for the last week and a half, a pellet grill, trying to figure out the which one I want. So I might have to find that and start that one. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> you never know what it is, right? It just whatever fun thing you can have and you have enough people to get together, all of a sudden it becomes topical. And, it, and, and you're forming a relationship that will last beyond just business, which will grow your business, quite literally. Um, yeah, I couldn't agree with that more. Um, speaking of which, since you, since you said that, um, one of the people that I know that I'm talking to right now, what he has gone out and done is he has gone out and interviewed all the builders, right? So they have inter interviews with the builders, tell them what they're doing, what their homes are doing, how they're being built today, where they're at in stages of the builds. So even if you want to go do something along those lines, right? If you wanted to go and interview local industry folks, such as builders, um, restaurant owners, how they're handling their curbside pickup these days. Are they doing curbside pickup these days? You know, having those kind of conversations and then putting them out there is, is huge with that. Um, so don't hesitate to go out there and step a little bit probably outside some of our comfort zones. It, nice thing about being an interviewee, especially if you're camera shy, if you're video shy, you don't have to be the person in front of the video. You can be interviewing them and they can just be the ones being seen. So you can definitely do that as well. Um, so again, I'm a big Facebook fan, but I think this could definitely work in the world. We're, right now we're in garage sale season or very close to garage sale season, depending on which day the weather decides to rain or not rain. Why not do a virtual garage sale? Now, the reason I bring this up and I said it before, is one of the things that I've seen is I'm a big Disney fan. Now, I'm not a pin trader, but there's a group out there that about once a week, about a, once every two weeks, every three weeks, they will get online and they will trade pins back and forth or they'll sell a pin. So, you know, work with your subdivisions that you're working with and then come out there and, and get them to come on, you know, have a Zoom call, even do a, like Jim's doing here, he's got a bunch of panelists out there available. You could have people that would just want to say, hey, I want to buy this. And then you can pay Pallet, Venmo, Venmo it, whatever tool you guys want to use back and forth to do that. But people could buy and then they could come pick it up or you could ship it or do whatever. Having a virtual garage sale for a subdivision, I think would be a lot of fun right now to actually pick up that business. And again, you know, instead of having the yard sign saying, you know, XYZ brokerage sponsored, now you can have the whole thing around for you that's out there. Masterminds. The reason I bring this one up, I think it's a unique thought. And I, and I always want to think people, try to chance people to think outside the box and think beyond the solutions that are here. So a lot of times we get together with fellow real estate professionals and we want to mastermind. We talk over a book, we talk over a topic, we talk during what's going on with the pandemic, right? We have these mastermind sessions out there. Why not do that with your sphere? How are you handling the pandemic? How are you handling family life? How are you doing X, Y, Z? What are we doing? Start having these masterminds out there. Again, be the lead for these events. Because again, what we're trying to do with this is stay conscious, right? We're just trying to stay in the forethought of their brain. So run a mastermind on a book, on a topic, on um, whatever you want to do, but start running a mastermind for groups of people that are staying at home. The, uh, I think the fun ones right now would be topics like, how to be the substitute teacher <laughs> that no one wants to be. How are you going to 
um, run an at-home office with two at-home workers, right? Husband and wife teams are not used to working at home together <laughs> from eight to five. We're not used to that. You're fighting bandwidth issues, have mastermind conversations on things like that and give ideas and strategies that help to grow that and be that person that runs that. We all have business partners. We all have business partners that we can rely on and we can take advantage of. So one of the things that I absolutely love doing right now, and again, that's what my lunch and learns are really doing right now, are coming out there and interviewing one of my business partners, my mortgage folks, my attorneys, my home inspectors, um, my financial advisors, whoever it may be. I'm interviewing these folks to have them tell of strategies that are going on. I know Jim said he did something very similar to this with the GAD you guys had early on talking about, um, you know, the PPP and, you know, all the stuff ahead of time. Well, these are the same conversation everybody else needs to hear, right? The chambers do a good job with this stuff, but not everybody's a chamber member. So doing this in your own audience is having this. And I do want to take a step back here real quick, because I've said a lot already. And sometimes what I want to just say in this, in, in a real quick second is this, a lot of times in here, what we think is they've already heard this. That may or may not be true. But what I do know is true is whether they heard it or not, they haven't heard from you and your voice might be the voice they need to hear it from. Because I don't know about anybody else. If you have kids <laughs> or in my situation, I have nieces. It's always amazing to me how the parents can tell them one thing, tell them to go clean their room or go tell them why they should be doing X and they won't listen to it. And then I'll watch my grandma and grandpa tell them the exact same thing. Okay, I'll go do it now, <laughs> right? Sometimes you just need to hear it from another voice. You just need to sit there and hear from another voice. So having out there and having these conversations, even though like you feel it may be done, having it from another voice could be the voice they need to hear it from. Well, and I get that a lot too, Justin, just to jump in. Uh, when I'm training, sometimes they'll say, well, Heartland told me this, even though I know their managing brokers or their mentor have gone over this with them. But when it's said in my classroom, whether it's me or another instructor saying it, like you said, it's another, it's a third party verification. Well, it is that, but here's what's really going on a lot of times. So there was a study, oh man, I don't remember how years ago, I'm an old manufacturer, right? So I've, I've, I'm a train, my, my technical degree from uh, a master's was training development, but it was in industrial training. So I was designed to go into manufacturing facilities and develop training programs for these companies. And there was a study done. It had to be late 80s, early 90s, where uh, robots were finally starting to hit the manufacturing floor, mostly the shipping warehouses, right? Where these robots, these motorized carts would come through and move boxes from one area to the other. And people were starting to get run over. People were starting to get run over by these machines. And one of the things that happened with that run over is they went, oh, well, what happened is the people were tuning out that noise. So what they did then is added a siren to the machine. It lasted about six months. They would not get run over. And then they started getting run over again. Well, what they really came to find out is we as humans, we learn to tune out things that quote unquote aren't pertinent to us, aren't urgent to us, aren't important to us. We tune these things out. So what the machines do now is it's always a different noise, but every two, three days, it changes whelps to beeps to noise. So it's always staying conscious. Unfortunately, Jim, and for me as well, we're that beeping noise that never changes. <laughs> And that's sometimes the same thing with brokerages, right? The brokers are doing a wonderful job of teaching, but sometimes they're just, <laughs> they're just. My wife might noise. say the same. I think she's a beeping noise sometimes. <laughs> right. What? Don't use, don't, don't quote me. Don't use that story against me. I don't need husband and wives getting mad at each other. <laughs> I'm blaming myself. <laughs> mm. But what I think is great getting back to the business partners is, if you get these interviews as coming from your voice, you're interviewing these folks, you can have a different conversation. 
and and your your audience will hear it because it's coming from you not from a person they've heard it either multiple times from or really haven't heard it from we're just making an assumption they haven't heard it so use your business partners um know what the rights are, right? I got some friends of mine that are attorneys right now that I'm going to talk to. I'm probably going to interview in a short bit that I absolutely love because they're trying to tell us what we can and can't do and how we should look at handling business when we're opening back up, how we should handle business, how we should look at it and is out there. Um, so you can always have that up do those things, right? Have those business partners, have the people and, and use their strength to bring those conversations in the forefront. My sister, I, so right now I'm in Wisconsin because if I'm gonna lay it by myself, I can at least have some people I see besides four walls all day long. And I saw my sister about two, three weeks ago and she brought over a game called Sushi Go. Now, the reason I mentioned that game Sushi Go is this. She didn't buy it. She didn't buy that game. She did not have it in her idea to buy it. Her kids didn't want it. Nothing, you know, it wasn't one of those things where, okay, we got to have this game. But what happened is one of her friends out in this area, one of, you know, one of her daughter's friend's parents bought this game and just Amazoned it to him. And they played it and they love it. So, but not what I love about this, thinking about it from our perspective, thinking about it from a different regards is they bought this game. Every time they sit there and go, where'd you get this game from? They say, oh, so-and-so got it for us. So a simple little game that you enjoy, that you think someone else will enjoy, you can send it to someone else, Amazon it to them, whatever, Walmart, ship it, whatever you want to do. You can send these games to them. And now every time this game is sent or every time this game is played, they're going to literally think of you. And I find it fascinating. I love this idea so much because if you go, if you go look on Amazon, you can find games between five and $9. That's what that sushi goes. I think sushi go was 10 bucks. It was a $10 card game that you can go send that to a bunch of friends. And now you have solutions out there that you can go out there. And every time that game is played, they're thinking of you, you're top of mind for that. So I just, to me, this is fun. Card game, board games, puzzles, uh, even little small outdoor games I was looking online, you can get for fairly inexpensive, especially if you're trying to keep kids busy when they're bouncing around the house all day long. The other thing that we can do is They can, uh, you can give your clients goodies, right? Give them a, a bacon set of cookies, do something like that. But more specifically, I think the best way to do this right now is go partner with a local business, go partner with a local restaurant, go partner with anything in your area, get a gift card or do, or do anything and go share that with your, with your friends, family, your sphere, whoever, and give them some goodies. Uh, a, a buddy of mine out of DeKalb, he, he works for Thrivement Financial, he gave away 10 pizzas to people that were kind of not, I won't say in need, but you know, definitely appreciated uh, the fact that the meal was paid for them. I know I had uh, an agent I was talking to, actually a managing broker, for a small office that one night, probably three, four weeks ago, they bought pizza for everybody, for their, for their families, right? So once the brokerage did that for them and talking to the agents, they really loved that, right? It was really, really nice. So maybe not has to be pizza. It could be something different, a, a, a cookie gift set, whatever it could be, but you can go through and give small little things like that, that will help stay relevant, stay first of mine stay so just there. just yes, it's interesting you say that i two weeks ago um i did exactly that 
uh, you know, it, it's, we're always telling our agents, you want to do Popeyes, you want to, you know, make those connections. I ended up cooking dinner for each one of my agents and delivering it to their house. And the feedback that I got from that was fantastic. It, you know, went relatively viral in the, their little Facebook worlds. So, it, you know, it's, it, it's such a topical thing to do and it's so unexpected, especially right now that it gets received extremely well. Sorry, I actually muted myself. Yeah, so I, I uh, <laughs> no, I, I got a mute button. I accidentally hit it. Sorry about that, folks. No, I, I agree. I think these are huge. I would say the two biggest ones I have seen some of the biggest effects from today, just kind of staying conscious, staying relevant, is the goodies, right? Just a little simple, little, little either homemade, which I think was awesome, or uh, you know the you know the Amazon game. Go buy a game from a store, ship it to them, and and go from there. Those I have seen have some of the biggest effect and the longest effect, to be honest with you. It's just one of those things that right now has been extremely appreciated. Now, the last two we're going to spend some time on, and then again, we're we're we probably got about five, maybe ten minutes more of conversation, but. I, I'm really hoping you guys have some other ideas that we can share back and forth, kind of make this a mastermind, so to speak, of a conversation. I'm just kind of trying to start the conversation off. But one of the things that I think is really easy to, not really easy to do right now, but one of the, one of the strongest things we can do right now is if we've done some of these things, we've done a webinar, we have done a workshop, we have done um, networking events, business partner interviews. We have done these things. We have created a format. We have created a format where we have now created video, right? We have created video. Jim, I believe is recording this. He now has video in here. <laughs> and with that, he has the video, but now what Jim can do with the video is he can extract, well, actually from Zoom, Zoom does it automatically for you, which is amazing. Zoom also will extract out the audio. So not only does he have a video that he can put on his, his website, his hometown realtor uh, organization website, he can not only put it there, but he can take that audio and now he can put it into a podcast and now he can have that to a different audience, people that listen more than they watch, right? Most of the things that we have talked about today really hasn't required any visuals. We're here video, so I put the visuals up, but I really could have talked about this just as easy over podcasting, pretty much got the same point across. But what I really love about this, when you look to podcasts, you've created one bit of material, and so far we've created two bits of information. We have created a video and we have created a podcast. But the next little bit in here that you can do with this is when we're done with this, you can also extract the text out of the audio. So I'm going to say this real, real slow <laughs> because sometimes we misspell things. They're one of my favorite apps today, and I'm the big old tech nerd, so I'm, I'm going to make sure I stay slow and easy on this. But one of my favorite things today is an app called Otter, O-T-T-E-R. And I'll make sure to write it in the, in the uh, chat box here in a second, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, it's O-T-T-E-R and it's O-T-T-E-R dot A-I. So what happens is you can take the audio from, actually you can even put the video straight into Otter. It'll, it'll, it'll take the audio out. It will also transcribe and the transcription is really, really good. It doesn't miss too much. And for instance, Jim has said a couple things in the middle of here. It would actually say speaker one, speaker two. 
so we can see who's talking. And what I like about that, now that I have the video, I have Facebook, YouTube, I have all these platforms I can put them in. I have the podcast, so now I have a podcast platform, so now I can be on Spotify, iTunes, um, you know, all the podcasting platforms out there. But I now have probably two to three, depending on how long this conversation is, I usually have probably two to three blog posts that I can put out there. So now I have content essentially for the week. And again, when I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to grow a new audience. Now I have from a five, 10, 15, 20, 30 minute, 45 minute conversation, I have multiple entries of data, multiple entries of listening points that people I can be in front of them through their eyeballs, their ears, through just listening or reading, right? I have these opportunities to be available to them, which to me is huge. I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> Jim, you just caught me. You looked away and you were headless. <laughs> it was awesome, sorry. Sorry guys, that one just caught me off guard. Um, Last but not least, social media. That's still probably one of the best platforms I think we can be out there and on still to this day. Now, I'm still a big fan of the Zoom. I think that's probably by far the best platform you can do this all, but social media can do this. Now, if you buy, I think right now the way they have this, if you buy the 150 version of Zoom, you should be able to share this on Facebook. You could do a live share. I think they changed that model. For a while you couldn't do it, but I think right now they've changed that model. But if not, you can go Facebook Live, you can do all these things. But again, let's go back to what we talked about. We created the video. Even if I was to go live, I could still put this video on my Facebook group. I could put it in, I could, I could put this on YouTube. I could then share it onto Twitter. I could then put it on Instagram, right? I can put it on all these platforms and then I can be out there. Again, this video, what we're doing right now, this conversation right now could be released to probably 10 different platforms by the end of the week. No pressure, Jim, I'm not telling anybody that, but we can do all this out here real simply. And again, it's just staying top of mind. So everything that we've done is now in environments that we're staying first of mind. We're being staying on top of where this is where it's at. So for me, the reason I have social media as one of the last conversations is because Everything that we have done up till now can then all be put on there, right? You can put it on different ways. You can promote it. You can have those conversations. Now, I am going to spend just a few seconds on this because I think this is extremely important, especially in the real estate world, especially what we're trying to do right now. There is a speaker, uh, a real prominent social influencer by the name of Gary Vaynerchuk, V-A-Y-N-E-R. C-H-U-K. When he talks, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to warn you ahead of time. If you go to YouTube and you Google him, if you have sensitive ears, you're not going to want to listen to him. Gary swears. He doesn't care. He just swears. But his material is really good. His information is really solid. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Jer Gary Vaynerchuk's got a really good book. It's called Jab, 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 Right Hook. That book essentially is this. That book is essentially a conversation that says we have to give before we ask. And right now we're in the world where we have to give way more than we ask. And the way I typically explain this and the way I typically describe this is if you're going to be on social media and you're going to try to say it's top of mind, it's going to be the 80, 90, you know, 80, 20 rule, 90, 10 rule, right? It's going to be in that ballpark where the 80, 90 is the give. So the way I typically explain this is this. Say everybody that's listening right now, I give you all $100. And that's for your attention. If I give you $100, that's great. But every time I give you a piece of value, I give you another value statement, another information that you have deemed worthy, I'm going to give you an additional $5. But every time that I ask something of you, attend my open house, check out my website, 
right? Anytime I'm asking something of you, I'm taking $10 away. Quite literally, there is only so many ask I can ask before you can't afford to listen to me anymore. That is how most algorithms are written in the social media world. Most algorithms are written in such a way that if you are not giving a value and is not perceived value, you will not be seen. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, pretty much all written the same way. So what you want to do is find the value items that you can give your folks at all time without expectation of receiving. Now, don't get me wrong. We still have to ask the ask, right? We still have to give an ask every so often. Um, one of the best examples I can give you on this is Carrie Little. Carrie Little, I think, does a great job. Some of you may know her, but she does a really great job on social media, especially from a real estate perspective. A lot of, it's, it's probably 90% of the time when she's talking on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, she's just telling you stuff. She's just sharing. But it had to be about a year and a half, two years ago, she came out and she stepped out of an open house, took out her thing. I think it was Facebook Live. It might have been, it might have been an inst it might have been a Snapchat. But either way, it was a video platform. She came out and said, Hey, I just learned talking to one of my mortgage friends, I just learned about this college grant program, which there's a program out there at the time that would basically give a down payment assistance to recent grads. So she spelt it out real quickly, took her no more than 30 seconds. Cause again, I think it was Snapchat and those are short segments. She snapped, she built it out there. She closed four deals off that 30 second video, but everyone wants to credit the video for doing it. Really where the credit comes from is she spent all the time before that, building a reputation so people were listening to her. If she was doing nothing but ask people wouldn't be listening to her, she wouldn't have got those deals. So everything that we talked about, all of these are gifts. All of them are gifts. So then when you have that ask, you're going to have that ask, you're going to have, you're going to have the credit, you're going to have the bank where they're going to want to repay you. They're going to want to give something back to you. They're going to want to help you out. Um, so don't hesitate to do the ask, but make sure that 80, 20, 90, 10 rules well into play. Because that's where most of the people are, are basically nailing it right now. So with all that, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> What questions do you have? I always like to give the last 15 minutes or so, and we're pretty much at that point. What questions do you have? What other ideas am I missing? Because I would love to see ideas that you guys are nailing and having success with right now. I'd love to hear them because I am actually talking about this quite a bit. And if I can learn from you, I would love to. So feel free to unmute and share or write in the chat box if that's what you'd rather do. I have both open. Talk to him into silence, Jim. Let me join you. <laughs> Not talking to yourself anymore. Um, oh, I love it, Stephanie. That's great. Doing interviews and just started converting to a podcast. That's great. What platform are you using right now, Stephanie? What platform are you going to put into the podcast? You can unmute too if you want to talk. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, I just started using Anchor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a free platform, really good. Yeah, thank you. How have you been, how long have you been into it? Or are you literally just starting? <laughs> I've been doing interviews for about three months. And yesterday I just did my first, um, uploaded a past interview up into a podcast on Anchor. Awesome. I love it. So for everybody that just missed some of that, that conversation, Anchor is a podcasting platform. It's one of the probably the easiest to get into low threshold barrier. You can literally do what Stephanie just said, have the interviews out there and just upload them into the system. 
and it goes out to all the platforms again ipod you know um itunes spotify it goes to all of them so it can be out there the only thing i don't think it goes to right now is alexa but that's minor right and i did go to buzz buzz sprout sprout yep um, and they have a whole series on how to start a podcast from step one to posting to gaining followers. I really think podcast is one of the best things to be on right now because eventually we will be back to whatever new the new normal is, but we will be back to being in our cars and then we're just, we're in their ears. I, I think podcasting is one of the best things we can be doing right now. Great. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm not hearing other stuff. What are you guys doing to be successful right now in uh, today's modern world of uh, stay at home? Anything you want to offer? You don't have to share your secrets, but if you have something to offer, we'd love to have that conversation. Anyone can chime in, just unmute. Lots of Zoom. So how are you using Zoom to promote yourself? Um, again, the interviews that I'm doing, um, I'm doing as them as Zoom interviews. Um, I got introduced to a senior living facility through a Zoom conference and now working with them as their realtor. Um, so it's very positive because then you can see, you know, it's more face to face and it was just a great conversation. Interesting. So one of the big things I adopted just recently is I, before I got into, uh, being a designated managing broker, I wasn't necessarily really active on social media platforms. So as this all started to go down, it was designing a strategy to be able to use over the different media platforms and then rolling that out to different agents. So just getting into that rhythm and routine, it's almost like deciding to go start working out and you know what you need to do, but you haven't made your plan to do it. Um, as soon as everything kind of slowed down, Developing that plan and then starting to execute it was, you know, definitely something that became very helpful. Thanks. Do you guys have any questions? Anything you want to cover? I would just offer as well as I just posted in the chat room that the next couple of webinars that we're going to have, I'm going to take my business builder course, which is a three to four hour course that I've, I've been teaching for several years and break that up. So the first one's going to be next week and the 20th is really getting started. It's meant for brand new agents. Um, so talking about realistic expectations in real estate. Um, obviously there are some people, especially a couple of you on this uh, call today or zoom today that have broken that mold. But for most agents, when they start off, they're not doing 20 deals a, a year. And I think that sometimes their managing broker is afraid to tell them that and what the realistic expectation is. So we talked a little bit about that. And then more importantly, the next week is marketing, how they can shorten that window and get up to speed quickly and be selling property and making a living out of this instead of this being a part-time living or subs uh, you know, subsequent living. Um, after that, we will talk about buyers and working with buyers on, the, on that's uh, June 3rd. And then June 10th is the seller session. And then June 17th, we're going to talk about fair housing and antitrust. That will be a piece of our new member jumpstart class. So you're all welcome to attend that. But fair housing, disparate impact, antitrust, and a few other things, uh, I'm going to call it legal in a sense. Um, so nice refresher, as Justin talked about early in the seminar here. Um, sometimes it's good, just good to hear that again and to get have it heard from a different person, a different perspective, a different way. And we'll sense, uh, talk about some examples in there of things that uh, could get people in trouble if they're not ready for it. And really that's the gist of that is to be prepared for the question that you weren't otherwise prepared for. Um, and then the last one, which will be on June 24th, is advanced techniques. So in my new member jumpstart class and then that follow-up business builder, I often talk about advanced things that they can do to, uh, if they're on a listing presentation, for example, that they can throw this out there and convince perhaps or, you know, get a seller who's on the fence 
of signing with them to come off the fence and, and to sign with them. So I'm calling that advanced techniques. I haven't figured out fully yet what that agenda is, but uh, we'll make up some good stuff for that class. So that's June 24th. So that wraps up those things. Did you guys have any final questions? No. Thank all right. You. Thank you very much. Appreciate you all coming and joining us. And we will see you soon.